Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hunter, and this is the first video in this Dark Souls series. I don't think that anyone really has done justice for this particular game. Dark Souls is an absolutely incredible experience. I think a lot of people are scared of it, frankly. It's a very difficult game. Demon Souls was extremely difficult. Dark Souls certainly isn't any easier. So what this series is going to be about is going to be about a concise, condensed, informative um, guide through the different zones in the game. So whether you, you know, you have the game and you've been hesitant to pick it up in a while because it's beaten you down so many times, or if you just want to watch and enjoy the experience because the environments are rich and detailed, the immersive experience is like nothing nothing else I've experienced in a game. Let's do it. We are ready to go. Before starting, I just want to spend about 30 seconds on the character creation screen. There are only two features here that actually matter, your class and your gift. You have quite a few classes to choose from, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you pick. If you pick sorcerer here, and at the end of the day, you want to be an axe-wielding barbarian, you can do that. It doesn't matter. The only things that these classes affect are your starting stat points that are listed there on the left and your starting equipment because of that i want to go with the hunter because he's got relatively light equipment seems to have a, a good sword there as well and pretty uh, middle of the road for stats pretty neutral there so should be a safe bet um, for gift it's i think a little bit more straightforward get the master key the other gifts are, you know, one-time use and consumable, or you can find them in the game, or they're purchasable from merchants. The Master Key, this is the only place to get it, and it saves you a lot of time and opens up some shortcuts for you and just saves you from some headaches and, you know, hunting around for keys and things like that. So we begin here in the Northern Undead Asylum, where we have been locked away because we are a hollowed, undead individual. This is where they're all corralled and locked up for the end of time. Conveniently enough, we had a body flung into our cell from up above, and, uh, well, conveniently it had the dungeon cell key. So uh, we're going to head off and um, just sort of uh, go through this tutorial portion of the game. Um, overall, this zone isn't really hard. Uh, the boss can be a little bit tricky, so um, we'll just uh, go through it real quick. Um, as we're going through this introductory uh, part, I'm going to explain a few things about the game. I want this to be accessible for everyone. So you've got your, your green bar there in the top left. That's your stamina. Stamina is very important. It gets used if you're sprinting or rolling or attacking or blocking or anything like that. Here we are lighting the very first bonfire in the game. Bonfires serve as checkpoints. Um, if you light them, that is, uh, it, and if you rest at one, that's where you're going to spawn if you die. It also refills your uh, healing potions and gives you full health. So, um, I mean, that's sort of pretty cornerstone uh, part of the game, the bonfires. And uh, this is Dark Souls in a nutshell. Oh, let's go open that door. Oh, wait a minute. Something's in the way. This is the Asylum Demon, and... Oh, okay, he got a cheap shot off there. Don't actually worry about the demon. You're just going to want to... You can actually see I'm doing some pretty fancy rolls there. If you time your rolls perfectly with his swings, you won't actually take any damage. But don't bother trying to kill that demon. Just go through that door there and uh, head down here to a very quick second bonfire. You never find bonfires in this quick succession. But um, we're going to rest here just to refill our life and uh, continue onward here. I don't have any good weapons at all right now, so here is my uh, shield. I'm going to go ahead and equip that. So you use R or sorry L1 to block, and uh, R1 is light attack, R2 is heavy attack, but um, I've got a broken sword right now, so there we go. Just finding our short sword. We're going to switch that on, keeping a close eye on my equipment load. And um, I'm actually going to remove my leather gloves. I'm doing that because if you have a lower equipment load, you can move quicker and it's a lot easier on your stamina. I'm not going to get into all the numbers. It's just not worth it right now. But I like to move basically as fast as possible. Moving, rolling, um, all of that. Um, I, 
I want it to be as quick as possible and regenerating as quick as possible. It helps out a lot. But of course, it leaves you a little weakened um, against attacks because, I mean, as you can see, I can't even wear all my uh, armor right now. Obviously, having a full set of armor on would... Uh, make me even stronger. I just want to point out quickly there is a ring up there. That is the rusted iron ring It's a very important ring for some later zones like swamp zones for moving in swamp and trudging through all that um, You can't get it right now. You can get it a little later in the game I just wanted to point it out as you head up the stairs here They're gonna roll a cannonball down breaks down the door here and leads you to one of the first NPCs. He has a, a bit of a story to tell, just talks about how he's uh, turning hollowed. And, well, I've agreed to hear him out, and at the end of his little spiel, he gives me the Estus Flask, so that's basically a healing potion that is refilled at bonfires. And he also gives me this key as well. So we'll just leave him to become hollowed. Poor soul. We're going to head up here and um, just uh, just finish off this area. So I believe the key he just gave me opens this door. I'll show you some of the basics for attacking right now. Again, like I mentioned before, oh, there's an item here. I did not realize. Short bow and arrows. Okay, so that's actually just because I chose the hunter class. Normally, there's no item there. But I've got a bow and arrow. I'm not going to use it, though. So... As I mentioned, you've got different kinds of attacks. You can do a light attack that I've been using, and then this is the heavy attack. Um, actually, for this particular weapon, it's a, more of a stab. And you can actually see I hit both of them with one stab. So if you line up enemies correctly, um, you can do a lot of damage even with one strike. So stabbing does a lot of damage. In here is um, an even stronger undead enemy. He's got a shield. I wait for him to make a mistake there, line up behind him. That's a backstab. Backstabs do about three times as much damage as a regular attack. And they are very useful, especially in PvP. A lot of people just spam uh, backstabs. As I traverse the white light here, you can actually see the boss below. You can do a jumping attack, attack right now. And there you go, you get the sword right in the head there. Um, so this is uh, the very first boss you're fighting. I mean, you guys saw me fighting him before. You're going to want to hold your shield up with um, L1, avoid his attacks. With any boss, though, you're going to want to keep an eye on his attack patterns. Okay, he's got this huge overhead swing, and it actually takes a lot for him to recover from that. You can see how long, how much time he gives me to attack him. Oh, he's got this one where he just sort of flies up in the air and then lands on his butt. So you don't want to be below him there. I used up a little bit too much stamina there. I wasn't able to roll out of the way of that attack. Uh, see my roll there? Perfectly timed. Oh, he does a bit of a double, but uh, I think that's going to be it for him. So, just avoiding his attacks, monitoring attack patterns, and punishing him when he misses you. You know, that's all it really takes for a lot of the bosses in this game. Oftentimes it takes a number of tries, but, um, you know, if you're patient, it's very doable. So we use this uh, key, and this is actually the end. Um, I mean, we're leaving the Northern Undead Asylum. You do return here a little bit later. It's optional to return, um, but you can do that. I'll also just point out, um, if you veer off to the right here, there's a nest, and you can hear this annoying bird chatting away um, at this nest, and he's asking for uh, soft and, and warm. Give me soft, give me warm. And that's, he's a trading bird. You can drop items there and he'll actually um, trade you if you exit the game and rejoin the game. Kind of a quirky thing from Demon Souls and Dark Souls. But it is useful, but later on, I don't have enough of the items here. Only and this is just in the a sequence. Legends, it is dated. Just listen for a few seconds. One day an undead shall be chosen. Bird drops you off at Firelink Shrine. Firelink Shrine is like the central hub um, of this game. A lot of zones are connected to this shrine. It's very complex. It would take a lot of explanation. Um, what I'm just going to sort of show you now is how you use bonfires. Again, I can rest at the bonfire. You can level up at the bonfire. I'm just going to go ahead and put three points into vitality. Um, I'm going to be putting a lot of points into Vitality and a lot of points into Endurance for this uh, this character type. So we're done doing that. Um, I haven't even mentioned it yet, but you spend souls um, on leveling up. Souls are everything in this game. You spend it on leveling up. You spend souls on 
Um, you know, you spend them at the merchants, you spend them on upgrading your equipment. They're everything. Um, humanity is the other major portion of this game. Your humanity counter is in the top left. You can see it says zero, zero. And then when I use my item there, it says I have two humanity in the bottom. I'm going to use one. And now I've got one humanity in my bang. Now that humanity is at risk. But what I'm actually going to use it for now is at the bonfire, you can reverse hollowing. Offer humanity and reverse hollowing. So here we go. Now, instead of being this heinous, monstrous, undead, I am a real human. Being human um, serves a major role in this game as well. Basically, any multiplayer that you want to do, you have to be human. Whether you're you know, being evil and doing PvP or co-op, um, you have to be human. Um, it does a bunch of other stuff too, but there's no point in detailing that all now. As I mentioned before, Firelink Shrine is the hub. You have lots of different paths you can take. You can go down this path here. It leads to this uh, this flat area where the Firekeeper is. She doesn't speak, but if you find Firekeeper souls, you can bring them to her, and she reinforces your Estus Flask so it heals you even more. That's very important. I will show you how to find at least three Firekeeper souls um, during these videos this walkway the stairwell down there that um leads just below here will take you to new londo ruins and the valley of the drakes you're not going to want to go down there just yet you need to be a bit of a stronger character first um, there are some items scattered around fire link shrine that you can pick up you saw me pick up some humanity before um but there i mean I may not show you every single one. Some of them are not uh, too crucial, at least at this stage of the game. But I'm just going to show you around a little bit. Um, if you head over here, and I mean just follow where I've been going, um, leading down to that graveyard, that leads to the catacombs. There are lots of skeletons that respawn down there, and um, it's not an area that you're going to want to tackle yet either. You need a divine weapon, um, preferably to tackle it. Um, and, and have sort of the easiest time, I'd go for a divine weapon first and do that. Um, you can see there's another item up there. Um, I can't quite get to it from here right now. The other areas I just wanted to show you quickly were up here. You can uh, talk to this guy here if you want to join a covenant. There are nine covenants. This covenant is Way of the White. I'm not going to detail it. I think it's a pretty useless covenant. I wouldn't recommend joining it. Um, if you go up these stairs here, this is a uh, shortcut that's unlocked later in the game. I wouldn't worry about this for now either. If you drop down, I believe there's a, there are some items down here as well. Dropping down once again, there are some chests. Um, again, you can just follow the path that I took there. Um, in here is Cracked Red Eye Orb. You can use that to invade somebody's game and steal their souls and steal their humanity. It's a PvP item. Uh, Morning Star and Talisman. It's a melee weapon and um, casting for some sorcery. Homeward Bone is very useful as well, and they're pretty limited in this game. Actually, maybe I shouldn't say that. I think a merchant sells Homeward Bone as well. Um, Homeward Bone allows you to warp to your latest, most recent bonfire, and you won't suffer losses in souls or humanity. So it's very helpful um, if you're worried about dying and you just want to get home and you know spend your souls, use that Homeward Bone. The other item that was picked up was um, this one here, Lloyd's Talisman. It prevents... Uh, usage of Estus flasks for your enemies. I don't know. I never actually used it. So I'm going to just finish off this video by um, going the direction that you should definitely go as well when just starting off here. It's towards Undead Berg. Just wait for these guys to make a little mistake. Should take these guys out, no problem. Although be careful because above, as you can see right there, there's somebody throwing firebombs at you. So if you're not careful, um, could end badly for you. We'll go take that guy out though. He's still hurling these bombs at me. We're going to head up to the sewers in a moment. Take him out. Actually, I didn't even kill him straight up there. I just knocked him off the edge. And then he died. Only a couple guys left here. Haven't actually been hit yet, I don't think. If you're, if you're careful, if you keep your shield up, um, I mean, really shouldn't be that hard at this stage of the game. I've just picked up a soul of a lost undead. You can pick up, like, souls. It's sort of like a... Um, having some extra souls in your wallet that you can use as you please. Um, and they vary in size. Like, these Soul of Lost Undead is probably, like, the smallest possible. You can get, you know, Brave Warrior and Hero Souls that are worth far more when you use them. It, uh, 
I'll go ahead and just show you. You can use, um, like, Soul of Lost Undead is worth how much? When I use one, it puts only 200 souls in the bank for me that I can use for whatever I want. This gateway here is locked. Well, it doesn't open from this side. That leads you all the way to the other end of Undead Burg. It leads you right next to the depths. Just put that out there for everyone. And we're going to then head up. This is the second section of the game. And um, as soon as we reach a bonfire here, we'll uh, put an end uh, to this introductory video. Uh, Undead Burg, a lot of the same monsters we've sort of encountered so far. But I want to show you guys uh, secrets too. So you can actually see up there is humanity. Um, you can just see that item in the distance. I know for a fact that that's humanity. And if you drop down from this area where I'm standing right now, if I drop down there, for example, you can make your way to that ladder and uh, go grab that humanity. I mean, I'm not going to do it right now, but that's certainly an option for you. So you do a backstab. Another thing is you're invulnerable when you backstab. So if you land one on an opponent, you don't, you know, you don't need to worry about other enemies like triple teaming you from other angles. Is there anything exciting in here? Uh, not really. I'm gonna traverse the white light. You can only traverse these lights one time, and it just like indicates progression in the game. Really, just more sort of bulk souls here as we're gonna head up, and uh, we're making our way pretty close to the bonfire. Nothing else over here. Just don't really want to miss anything. Want to point out as many secrets and whatnot as possible. This is cool. This actually only happens once as well. A dragon shows up. Pretty badass. This area here, um, you sort of get ambushed a little bit, so you may want to be careful. There's also that archer up there. You want to watch out for. See, this is sort of a part where a lot of people are going to die. You know, if you're getting attacked by like multiple people at once, you're getting hit with arrows as well. You're going to want to just be extra careful. You see, I almost died right there. So this is when you want to retreat. I'm going to switch to an Estus Flask. And you know what? I can't even going to take a second gulp there. If you want to be extra careful, you can lure all these monsters down. Um, luring is a, a very good tactic in this game overall. If you encounter like a horde of enemies and you can't take them on all at once, definitely do some luring. If you head over here... Um, these guys are two stronger enemies. I'm going to go for a backstab if possible. It's actually a little hard unless they make a mistake. Sometimes if you put your shield down, you can bait an enemy into attacking. Line up behind them. Oh, I went for a backstab but didn't quite connect. You have to be like right behind them to land the backstab. I'll try showing you that baiting technique again. Like my shield is down. And let's see if he'll attack me. I'm getting hit with those bloody arrows. I should have killed that archer off. There we go. So there's his attack. Line up behind him. It's a little hard to do. Getting so annoyed, he never wants to attack me. Okay, there we go. Okay, forget it. This guy's just um, circling too quickly with me. Okay, finally. Thank you. Very frustrating. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I did want to point out something over here. Behind all these crates um, is a staircase. And there's a merchant out here. Well, and... Um, we can actually just take a look, and I'll just tell you about some of the items, too. Um, you can get this uh, Guidance Stone, Orange Guidance Stone. That allows you to leave messages for players and multiplayer. Um, nothing here is really too interesting. Residence Key will help you out later. It'll open up um, sort of a treasure area in the Undead Thank Bird, and that's all the souls I have. He sells some other weapons and arrows and things like that, but... Um, for now, I'm, I'm happy with a couple of purchases that I made, and uh, we're just going to head up to where this archer has been pestering me all game long. Um, there's some souls in here, I believe, as well. Oh, a wooden shield, okay. So I can actually just take a look what's better. The wooden shield is better, so we're going to just go ahead and switch that on. And uh, head up here. Just kill off this archer using a crossbow. So annoying. Okay, he's dead. And then as you turn left and go into here, this is the bonfire. Um, this is a bonfire you actually end up using quite a bit. You're going to come back here um, often, and this is where we're going to start the next video, where I'm going to be taking on the Taurus Demon boss. He's uh, the boss of the Undead Perk, sort of. So uh, we're going to head um, down this path there. And... Um, 
and take on that boss in the next video. Uh, the only other thing I'll mention, and I'm sure you've noticed right now, is whenever you rest at a bonfire, all the enemies uh, in the area respawn. Um, so yeah, just a side note as well. Okay guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, next we're going to complete the Undead Berg and uh, just keep moving on in this game. Thanks a lot for watching guys. See you next time. Peace out.